Number 10 Downing Street has a new occupant, Liz Truss. Today she was appointed as the Prime Minister of Britain. Usually that means a short drive down to Buckingham Palace, but not this time. The Queen is at her Scottish residence of Balmoral. So Liz Truss had to fly down to meet her. But before that, there was one tiny business. The incumbent Prime Minister had to step down. That's Boris Johnson. He delivered his farewell address outside Downing Street. You could call it a typical Boris speech. On the subject of bouncing around in future careers, let me say that I am now like one of those booster rockets that has fulfilled its function and I will now be gently re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down invisibly in some remote and obscure corner of the Pacific. And like Cincinnatus, I am returning to my plough and I will be offering this government nothing but the most fervent support. Dramatic as ever. That's Boris Johnson's assessment, a booster rocket that has fulfilled its function, he says. Many Britons would disagree with that. After all, Johnson's term went from one crisis to another, Brexit issues, to the pandemic, to party gate, to inflation. After this address, Boris Johnson travelled to Balmoral. He met the Queen to deliver his resignation and soon after that Liz Truss was summoned. She was officially invited by the Queen to form a government. It's a normal process in every democracy. But what's Britain without a pointless dose of monarchy and traditions? As for Liz Truss, she has no time to settle in. Her cabinet will be announced shortly and by Thursday her energy plan is expected. Now yesterday we told you what her policies are what her plan is to tackle the economic crisis. Today we'll focus on the man she succeeded. That's Boris Johnson. How will the British public remember him? Probably as a divisive leader. Johnson shot to fame with a Brexit vote. He was a poster boy of Euroscepticism. In 2019, he was elected to lead the Conservative Party. His mission was quite simple, get Brexit done. Boris Johnson promised a clean and swift divorce from the EU and the British public gave him a chance. In the 2019 general election, the Conservatives won by a landslide, their biggest victory since 1987. Boris Johnson almost seemed invincible. But then came the dreaded pandemic year, 2020. The Wuhan virus exposed Johnson's shortcomings as Prime Minister. First he downplayed the virus, then he flirted with the idea of herd immunity, basically letting the virus spread. Under his watch, Britain suffered. More than 188,000 people died from the Wuhan virus, the highest death toll among European countries. More than 23 million people were infected, including Boris Johnson himself. One word probably sums up his attitude, indifference. Which brings us to the biggest controversy of his tenure, party gate. Johnson and his officials were clicked partying during Britain's lockdown. Everyone else was stuck at home, but Downing Street was having fun. No masks, no social distancing, just a lot of booze and entitlement. Party gate became the final blow for Boris Johnson. His cabinet members abandoned him. His party leaders criticized him. At that point, the writing was on the wall. Maybe someone else would have resigned a bit earlier. But that's Boris Johnson for you. He hung on till the last moment and from the looks of it, there are still some bitter feelings. The baton will be handed over in what has unexpectedly turned out to be a relay race. They changed the rules halfway through, but never mind that now. And through that lacquered black door, a new prime minister will shortly go to meet a fantastic group of public servants. When leaders resign, you always ask one question. Is he or she leaving the country better than they found it? In Boris Johnson's case, the answer is no. Financially, Britain is struggling. Inflation is at a 40-year high and energy bills are up 80%. What about relations with Europe? Again, not so good. Johnson's Brexit was neither quick nor seamless. There are multiple trade issues. Jurisdiction of European courts and fishing rights. All of this still has to be resolved. It makes you wonder, is there anything positive in Johnson's legacy? Perhaps foreign policy. Boris Johnson wanted to create a global Britain, a lot like Donald Trump. He wanted to make Britain great again, if you will. And to some extent, his foreign policy gambles worked. Like the AUKUS Pact. Britain had no business in the Indo-Pacific, but Boris Johnson went ahead anyway. He struck a submarine deal with Australia and the US, and overnight, London became a key player in the region. 
Same in Ukraine. Boris Johnson visited Kiev three times after the war broke out. He also sanctioned military aid worth $2.8 billion. Compared to other European leaders, his position was tough. He ruled out talks with Vladimir Putin. He opposed territorial concessions. He was totally invested in Ukraine. And don't mistake this for IT support. Boris Johnson's image back home was in tatters. So Ukraine was an attempt to launder his legacy. To give the impression of a wartime leader, like his idol, Winston Churchill. So looking back... How do we judge Boris Johnson's 1,139 days in office? Eventful, controversial, but also entertaining, you have to say. Johnson leaves his country worse than he found it for a leader who promised so much that will always be a tough pill to swallow. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.